make it clear. I got the Lord on my side, and with Him I'm gon' ride. Yeah. I ain't never scared, never scared, I ain't never scared. Hey. I got the Lord on my side, and with Him I'm gon' ride. I ain't never scared, never scared, hey. never scared. Hey. No my ride is Greetings with the love and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ to everyone who is watching our program today. We welcome you all back to God's Cup of Blessings Youth Ministries. Our El Shaddai, Almighty God, is your host, and I am your co-host, Shepherdess Catherine Hunter Williams. Before we begin teaching today about the Ruach HaKodesh, also known as the Holy Spirit, let us all pray in one spirit and in agreement, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hmm. Holy Spirit, lead guide and speak through me by giving me the words and directions I need to teach about Jesus Christ's grace and about the attributes of the Holy Spirit to our young people today. Move me out of the way, Holy Spirit, and prick our young people's hearts to hear our Heavenly Father's word and be saved on this day. And I thank you, my Father, for giving me another day and opportunity to teach our young people about the Holy Spirit and the good news of Jesus Christ, gospel of grace, and Jesus' all-powerful and majestic name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lead me, Holy Spirit. We all. Thank you. Lord, hallelujah, let me testify to you about our Jesus Christ's grace and about his Holy Spirit. And that we're going to be speaking teaching on from the scriptures John 14 16 to 17 get your pads and pencils out because I will be giving you scriptures as we go along because I want you to know this word is from the Lord it's not from me it's from his word period if there is some good news I'm definitely going to tell you about it so let me tell you what the good news is it's about Jesus Christ's grace and what he has done for you when he died upon the cross and said, it is finished. And our father said, it is done. This good news is he did not leave you alone. He sent you a comforter to help you with your life. He dwells within you and is standing by waiting for you to call upon him right now. Amen. He even sends you his grace when you mess up. Hallelujah. You can become free through his grace. And I do mean true freedom. And you will feel it as you learn more about his grace. The more you learn about his grace, about Jesus Christ's grace, the more you fall in love with him, the more you feel free from that religious way that we have been taught, from traditional ways that we have been taught all our lives. Now, do you know they would talk about Jesus? They mention Jesus. They say things from the New Testament. But they never really expound on his grace. Or that when he said, it's finished, it is finished. No more condemnation. No more guilt. No more shame. He took it all away from us. Our sins, past, present, and future sins, have been removed. Iniquities have been removed. It's all gone. Hallelujah. It's all in his word. Just read about Jesus and what he did for us. And I want to tell you some more about his grace. His grace, like I said, will free you. I mean, the more you learn, the freer you become. And it's just a wonderful feeling within yourself to know that you are finally free from all of the, the laws of Moses, from the condemnation, the guilt, the shame. The laws of Moses ministers death and brings that condemnation, guilt, and shame. You are forgiven for your sins. That's good news, too. That's absolutely good news. You are forgiven. Now, all you got to do is believe it and receive it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Freedom is nothing like the freedom that you have when you know the truth and about the grace of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All right, I got to move forward because I got ahead of myself, as I usually do. On our last program, we talked about the Comforter, also known as the Holy Spirit, uh, as being your paraclete or advocate, which means one called aside to help you in a time of need. 
And it comes from the scripture, 1 John 2 and 1. That's why I said, you could, he dwells within you. You could call on him at any time. You're never alone anymore. That's good news. I'm just giving you all good news. You have a comforter. You got the Jesus Christ's grace. You're forgiven of your sins. No more condemnation, guilt, or shame in your life anymore. That's all good news, and it all comes from Jesus. Good news is the gospel of the grace of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We spoke about faith and how the Holy Spirit helps you with your daily problems and needs. 1 Peter 5 and 7 says, You can cast all your cares upon Jesus because he loves you. Jesus loves you like no one else can love you. He has an agape, which means an unconditional love for you. He is not a man and does not love you with a human type of love, which can fail you. And you know what I'm talking about, people. Love from a human can fail you. It's a, a thing, a song I'll call, it's a thin line between love and hate. <laughs> and that's the truth. His love goes much deeper and nothing can separate you from his love. Turn with me to Romans 8, 38 through uh, 39. Romans 8, 38 through 39. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate you from the love of, of, of Jesus Christ. From our Father, nothing. It's right here in his word. All right, if you're there, speak it. Romans 8, 38, 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, neither heights, nor depth, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. He has a wonderful love for you. And once you start feeling his love, through his grace, wow, that's so awesome. That's so truly awesome. Today, we're going to teach about the Holy Spirit, mark of ownership. Go with me to, <coughs> excuse me, uh, go with me to 2 Corinthians 1, verses 20 through 22. 2 Corinthians I mean, I'm sorry. Yep, 2 Corinthians, verses 1. I mean, Lord, let me get it right. Okay, slow down, Catherine. Slow down, girl. 2 Corinthians 1, 22, 22, 22. All right. 2 Corinthians 1, 22, 22. All right, if you're there, speak. This is about the Holy Spirit's mark of ownership. 2222. For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in Him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now, He which established with you in Christ and have anointed us is God who have also sealed you and given the earnest of the Spirit in your heart. You're sealed. You're not yours anymore. You've been bought with a price. Now go with me to Ephesians 1, uh, 13. Ephesians 1, 13. That comes right after Galatians. Ephesians 1 and 13. If you're there, speak. And whom you also trust, after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also, after that you believe, you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Go down to the next one, which is the earnest of your inheritance. You know you have an inheritance in Jesus Christ. Everything Jesus has is yours. Hallelujah. Until the redemption of the purchase possession, which is you, unto the praise of his glory. Hallelujah. All right. In other words, when you receive the seal of the Holy Spirit on your life, 
It is a guarantee that you belong to our Heavenly Father. You are paid for with a price through the death of Jesus Christ upon the cross for you. Now that, um, when you receive the seal of the Holy Spirit in your life, is when you give your life to Jesus Christ. Once you give your life to Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes alive within you. He's already there with you anyway, because sometimes you may hear something and, and, and you'll say, uh, something told me this or something told me that. That's the Holy Spirit talking to you. But he come more alive in you when you give your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. He, he just becomes your best friend. He becomes your companion. He becomes your all in all. You, like I said, you were paid with a price through the death of Jesus Christ to be sealed by the Holy Spirit, guaranteeing you that you belong to our Heavenly Father. You will not belong to yourself anymore. And of course, the Holy Spirit will let you know that you need a Savior in your life. That's that voice that you be hearing. Some told me to go to the left and I went to the right. Some told me to go down that street and I didn't. Some told me don't go in that house, and I did. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. But he also let you know, like I said, that you need a Savior in your life. That's all the laws did. They pointed because they couldn't keep the laws of Moses. If they broke one law, they broke them all. You understand what I'm saying? You broke. There's no big sin and no little sin. If you break one law, you broke them all. And all of the Lord, he knew that they would not be able to keep those laws. So what he did is had put them there so they knew, they the Israelites knew that they need a Savior. Jesus, if you read the Bible, just go all through the Bible and you will see Jesus. They call them types and shadows. You will see Jesus. You will see the Holy Spirit all through it. All through it. From the Old Testament all the way to Jesus in the Gospels. You will see all about Jesus. The whole Bible is about him. You just got to study it, look at it, and you will see him. Start looking for him in your word. Start looking for him when you speak in the word of God. Hallelujah. All right. Getting ahead of myself. You know what I'm talking about when the pastor gives an invitation to salvation or open the doors of the church and you get that encouragement from within to step out in the aisle and go down and give your life to Jesus through confessing with your mouth, speaking Romans 10, 9 through 13. Amen. It's like you sitting there, you done heard the singing, you're having a good time, you're listening to the preaching, you're, um, oh, just a feeling comes over you and it's just, it's just awesome and this urge comes, you know, where you want to jump up and run down. Now I'm going to tell you about mine when I did it <clears throat> and he had me to do this urge, let's go down and, and give your life to the Lord, you know, that's the way he sounds just like that to me. That's the way he spoke to me. And I ain't going down there. No. Uh-uh. In fact, I was scared to go. So he told me to ask this girl that was sitting next to me to go down there with me. So if you're afraid to go, you know, to walk down that aisle and get give your life to Jesus Christ, ask somebody to go with you. I asked this girl to go with me, and uh, she walked me down the aisle. And uh, that was at uh, New Jerusalem uh, back in 1994. Uh, that was my first church I had became involved in after I gave my life back to the Lord because, well, evidently I never had taken my life from the Lord. He was with me all the time. I just had removed myself. You know, I ain't going to church no more. I'm, there ain't nothing happening there for me. Yuck, 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 whatever. Anyway, I removed myself, but I came back. And I came back on my free on a free will of my own choice, not somebody making me or like my mom used to make us go to church every Sunday and all through the week, whatever, on a free will of wanting to go and serve the Lord. Anyway, I went down there. She walked me down there. She said, are you all right? And I said, okay. And she went back to her seat. And I gave my, my life to the Lord that day. So, you know, like I said, if you're afraid to go down that aisle, because some people are, ask somebody to walk with you. Go on and give your life to the Lord. Hallelujah. It is the Holy Spirit who gives you that strong desire to go forward and receive the free gift of the salvation of Jesus Christ. In other words, to be born again spiritually, giving your life to Jesus. You know, because your spirit is dead until you 
uh, are spiritually alive through giving your life to Jesus Christ. If you're afraid, like I said, go down. Ask someone to go down with you. This will be one of the greatest decisions you ever made in your life, is giving your life to Jesus Christ. Nothing like it. You will see your life change before your eyes. It'll happen. Matthew 24, 44 says, Be you ready, young people. It's time to choose now that you know who and what the Ruach HaKodesh, also known as the Holy Spirit is, and how he can make your life more better than it's ever been before. Like I said, you'll have a companion. You'll have a friend. You're never alone. You can talk to him and he talks to you. Awesome. He can help you with your problems, things that go on in your life. Little things. It doesn't, well, actually, nothing little or big. It's all the same to God. Whatever you need, he's there for you. So the Holy Spirit is also there. He just, which, who is God? You know that. It's the true aim. It's the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They all go together. It's all in one, but yet there are three. And that's a whole nother program. <laughs> so I had to talk to you about that. But right now we're talking about the Holy Spirit. Um, and by now, through this series of teaching, you should know who the Holy Spirit is and what some of his attributes are. You can always ask him to reveal more to you about who he is through the word of our Heavenly Father. Because I've been doing this series off and on for, I think, since last year. I started this, and it's just pressed me to do, to tell the people who the Holy Spirit is, who do our cockadush, and also known as the Holy Spirit, who he is, and what he does for you, and how he helps you in your life. If You, you just have to be still and listen for him to, to, to help you. If you got something you need, Ask him to help you. He'll show you how to deal with it. And I'm a living witness to that. I'm sitting here, which is, you know, when uh, he told me to uh, start this here program, I, I no, Lord, uh, uh, no. I don't want to do that, Father. Uh, uh. You know, I had so many different fears and insecurities going on with me, and yet, just do what I told you to do. This is what he said, and I'll take care of the consequences. So I'm doing what he told me to do. And now we're in our second year, going on our second year of doing this. And I'm getting a little bit more comfortable, and my insecurities is gone, and I have my confidence. But my confidence is in Jesus Christ. It's not in me. And I'm telling you, that's the way it goes for me. So, hallelujah. <laughs> hallelujah. The Holy Spirit would teach you how to have a living relationship with the Word of our Father. As you develop this relationship with Him, you will begin to experience the supernatural power He has to positively impact every single area of your life. It is supernatural. It is not something that you, He's not something you can see or, or, or feel. It's like the wind. He's there, though. It's the, the wind is, you can't see it either, but you definitely can feel it. Okay. His word brings faith and hope along with healing within your body and mind. Healing in your relationships and in your finances. He is your strength and your provision. The word of our Heavenly Father has the power to heal and transform you. As I've said before, totally from inside out. And I'm a living witness to that, too. I wish my, I call him my co-host Paul was in here because he could testify to that. <laughs> you know what it is, what is in your heart will definitely show up on the outside, amen? Let the Holy Spirit show you how to meditate on our Father's Word and renew your mind in His Word. You've got to renew your mind in His Word. You have to do that because that's how you get to know who He is and what He can do in your life. And like I said earlier, if you look closely enough, you'll see him and Jesus on every page. Here are five ways that I know of how to meditate on a verse and re renew your mind with our Father's Word. You got your pencils and pad? I hope you do. Ready? Picture it. Visualize the scene in your mind. Visualize when you are uh, read, uh, speaking his word. Um, see yourself there. 
see the event going on in front of you in your mind. Number two, pronounce it. Say the verse aloud each time through expressing and using a different word. Three, paraphrase it. Rewrite the verse in your own words. Hallelujah. Four, which I love, personalize it. Put yourself in it. Replace the pronouns. Example given, I, she, or he, or this, or people in the verse with your own name. Put yourself there. <clears throat> Number five, pray it. Turn the verse into a prayer and say it back to our Father. That's all you got to do. That scripture that you just, okay, I'll just give you, let's see. Uh, blessed be my God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Father, I give this to you, and I thank you that you have blessed me in all heavenly places. Hallelujah, that's a strong scripture there. You're blessed in heavenly places. He's already put it there. You're, you're already there. That's grace. <laughs> Some more about the grace. Anyway, Lord have mercy. But you see how I just did that? Turn the verse into a prayer and say it back to my Father. That was uh, from Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. And I'm going to do it. Reverse the prayer. My Father, bless you. My God and my Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. That's a strong verse right there. I'm already blessed in heavenly places, and so can you. You must renew your mind, and doing it this way works, young people. To know who our Father Jesus, to know who our Father is who Jesus is and the Holy Spirit is is you will have to begin meditating on his word let me repeat that to know who our father God is who Jesus Christ is and the Holy Spirit is you will have to begin meditating on his word that means getting into this Holy Bible this helps you to develop a relationship with him you will learn about his grace you will learn about the Holy Spirit. You will learn about our Father God. Hallelujah. Um, as I said, let the Holy Spirit lead and guide you into a deeper meditation of our Father's Word. Let the Bible become a supernatural, living, powerful tool in your life. Uh, it's the best book in the world you can have. You know, if you're having a problem or something and, and it's an issue going on in your life and you don't know how to handle it, just go to the Bible. You know, and, and, and read whatever, when you open it up, read it and watch how the Lord works it out for you. It, it just, in fact, when you open it up, when you say, Lord, I can't deal with this. When you open it up, he's going to show you what to speak and watch it work out for you. Hallelujah. And <laughs> I just got ahead of myself again. The Bible gives you all the answers and directions you will need in every area of your life. Paul, how I'm doing on time? In the book of, of John 1, 20, what, okay. In the book of John 1, 1, 25, and verse 14, it says, I'm using my words. The word of my father is a person. I'm using my words now. The word of my father is a person, and his name is Jesus Christ. One who was born to save us from our sins. In Matthew 1, 23, it says, His name is also called Emmanuel, which means God is with us, and he dwells among us. His word is not a list of rules and regulations. The word of Jesus is the truth and the life. And when you meditate, as I showed you those five points to how to meditate and feed on his word, in the book of Proverbs 4, 22, his word said, he will bring life to those who find him and health to all their flesh. Okay, thank you. All right, I'm going to have to stop right here. Because I was watching one of my programs one day. And um, I went over too far running my mouth. And um, I, was, I wanted to do the salvation prayer because that's what I'm here for. I'm a fisher of men. And my whole thing is to youth. Okay, gotcha, bro. 
All right. Do you want to meet Jesus today and be free through his grace, his unmerited favor? To be free and meet Jesus, all you have to do is accept our Lord Jesus Christ, free gift of salvation. It is your time and day to make a decision. Don't wait until the, tomorrow, young people, because tomorrow may be too late. To give your life to Jesus Christ, just speak this prayer of salvation with me and begin a whole new wonderful life in Jesus Christ. All right. Put your hand on your heart. Do a pledge like I'm going to pledge my life to the Lord and speak with me. My Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. Asking for forgiveness. Come into my heart with your unmerited favor of grace. I believe with all my heart and I confess with my mouth that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead that I will be saved. You are now the Lord and Savior of my life and I thank you for saving me, Jesus. Amen. That's all you got to say. This is a fair paraphrased by me from the scriptures Romans 10 9 through 10 that's all it takes to be saved the Holy Spirit is now alive within you you will never be alone again he will help you to receive consistent success and victory in your life now young people that you are saved I don't want you to think that all things will be peaches and cream I want you to remember the devil is going to attack he didn't need to attack you before because he had already had you when you were in the world. So be ready, young people, for the battle between your ears, which is the fight for your mind and spirit. Start speaking Ephesians 6, 10 to 8 daily. Put it on the whole armor of God. All right, until next time. And remember, young people, it's not your battle, it's the Lord. Until next time, may our Lord Jesus Christ's grace, his peace be with you. And his countenance shine up you up on you always. In the name of Jesus, amen. Uh-huh. But God will get his glory. That's right. Now what we see. Lies never true. It's what he do. Tell me. Come on. Now lift your voice and make it clear. I got the Lord on my side. Yeah.